So I was new to the coal industry. I'd been a combustion engineer at a utility company for about six years. I go to the coal sales company and we have a customer that's complaining about the coal quality that they think they're getting is not matching up with our laboratory analyses. So off to the coal mine I go and I'm talking to the coal lab supervisor there and I said I need to get a sample of coal from that train going to this customer and we need to send a sample of that coal to the customer so that they could give it to their laboratory. Oh boy, that lab guy says, oh you don't know what's on that train. It could be high sulfur, high ash. We would never take a sample of coal and send it to a customer without first analyzing it. If you want the customer to be really happy, why don't you just take a sample out of that barrel over there? That barrel's got high CV, low sulfur, low ash. If you send him a sample out of that barrel, that customer can send it to any lab and they will get great results. I'm like, boy, I really didn't know that's how it could work. In other words, when you look at coal sampling paperwork, if you don't know the pedigree or if you don't know the history or you don't know the quality control associated with the coal sampling, the results can be misleading. This is particularly true in some areas of the world where I see people hand sampling a pile. If you hand sample a pile, those results are near meaningless in terms of accuracy. You're probably only within 5 or 10% of the actual values reported in that proximate analysis. So be careful of how the sample gets taken or if it's even taken at all, it might just come from a barrel.